Hello, I am Christy with Clients First Business Solutions, and today I'll do a quick overview of Pro MRO Aviation. And just a quick mention, Pro MRO is embedded within Acumatica Cloud ERP, who is the leader in usability for the last six years. For the demonstration today, I will be acting as an aircraft maintenance company, which focuses on 24 and 12 month routine maintenance on an aircraft. We will walk through some of the building blocks that make up Pro MRO, and I will also be showing you our shop floor app, which is the kiosk that allows you to enter time and corrective actions onto your work orders. Before we begin, I would like to point out that Pro MRO is designed to assist MRO companies with creating quotes and work orders to track all the costs associated by streamlining the processes and creating real-time connections from the shop floor to accounting. So as I mentioned, there are a few building blocks, and the first one we're going to start with is what we call customer aircraft. And by utilizing customer aircraft, you can track by customer ID, the make, model, and serial number. So I'm going to go ahead and launch customer aircraft from our Pro MRO module. Now for the demonstration, I have chosen a customer aircraft which has already been set up in the system so that I can quickly explain the detailed tabs that you see on the bottom. But first we'll start with the aircraft ID. This is a unique identifier for the customer aircraft that you're populating. You have manufacturer and model. You can specify a serial number and attach that to a customer or a business account. So the details that you see here down at the bottom, we have a work orders tab. And in this tab, it will list all the work orders that are in progress or have already been completed for this particular unit. The aviation tab, this contains pertinent details regarding the certificate information, airworthiness, ownership, and even when inspections are actually due. So now we'll head back to the Pro MRO mo module. And the next building block that I want to discuss is what we call task card profiles. Now task cards are templates for repeatable work such as a standard repair or an overhaul and inspections. So these would be used as your quoting template which give you the ability to quote expected revenue if you wanted to, quote labor, parts, subcontracting, all in one step. You can have as many or as few as you like, whatever fits your business model the best. As with most items in Acumatica, these templates are quite flexible, so you can add or add to or even remove the profiles on a work order quote or even a work order itself. You even have the capabilities to upload all the existing task card profiles that you may have in your already existing system. So to start, I will launch the task card profiles from here. And for the demonstration, I did create task cards for our A380. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on an A380. So from this screen, you would populate your task card ID and the description. For this one, it is a 12 month routine maintenance. The active button here simply means that your task card is active and can be used. If this is not checked, you would not be able to use that on a work order quote. The optional button here just means that this particular task is not required, but oftentimes it's performed at the same time as your standard repair or overhaul as a precaution. So this will only show on work order quotes to the customer that it's an optional service. So you can make these specific to any one of these fields, even your customer, uh, or you can leave it just blank as this is to make this a little bit more generic. So from the detail tabs below, you can see the revenue budget. So my particular task card is set up as a flat rate, which means that I expect to receive 25000 for a 12-month routine maintenance every single time. This is adjustable. You can adjust it at any time. You can raise it, you can lower it, whatever fits your business needs. The cost budget tab. The cost budget tab is used to store your labor hours, all the material to do your outside processing or services like an NDT or um, even paint. 
The work scope tab that you see here does break out your labor hours into work steps. So you can apply as many work steps with the hours and detailed instructions on how you would like those hours performed. This will also print out on your job card or your work order router, whichever terminology you use for your business. The work instructions here is for the overall instructions that you want for this task card. You can add as much information as you need or as little. So once a task card or task cards are defined, estimating and job creation is simple because you can select the appropriate task card and the revenue and all the costs automatically populate to your quote or your job. However, to make this even easier, we also have task card packages, which are a way to group as many task card profiles into one quick and easy step. However, to make things even easier, we also have task card packages, which are a way to group as many task card profiles into one quick and easy step. So for example, I'll click into task card packages now. For the demonstration, I have created task card package with two of our task cards that you saw earlier. I provided it a task card package name and the description, which is a 12 month routine maintenance. I added in the two task cards that we created earlier. As you can see, our revenue budget and our cost budget has transferred over into our task card package. So now to use our task card profiles in our packages, we are going to walk through creating a work order quote. So to create a work order quote, we will simply go to here and as for the demonstration, I have pre-created our work order. So once you've created your work order and you assign your business account or your customer, so now that we have our header information and you've saved it, this will give you a quote number. Now it's time to ask for a shop estimate for our quote. Simply click the plus button here or double click on the division. So we will use aircraft and our shop we will select maintenance. Description automatically populates so at this point we will go ahead and hit save. So now that we have saved our work order this does populate a shop estimate that went to your production supervisor or perhaps engineering's dashboard so they can perform the shop estimate. As we're wearing a few hats today I will go ahead and click on our shop estimate so now that we see our shop estimate, we can see that here in the description, they're looking for a 12 month scheduled maintenance quote for an A380 or an estimate. So now we can add our task cards or our task card packages. And because we created our package with multiple task cards, I will select task card package and I will choose the appropriate one, which was our A380. As you can see, this auto populates all the revenue and all the cost budget. You can see that from uh, each item that you have highlighted, this does give you the details of what has been entered into each one of those. So once you're happy with it, at this point you would go ahead and re remove the hold and then say release. So once you say release, that changes your work order quote as closed on your estimate, which tells your customer service that this is ready to be printed and sent off to your customer. So here is an example for our printing. And this is how it would look. Obviously, we can change this to any format that fits your business needs. Then you can send or you can export into an Excel or a PDF file. Or you can use our system to send this electronically via your email. So now you've received your quote back from your customer and they approve all work and all services that was on their order to be performed. You would hit service, select the accept saying that your customer did accept these two task cards. And I do realize that there are some MRO companies which would not use the work order quote as I have shown you in this demonstration. It may just go straight to your shop floor and they're the only ones that perform the quote all the way into the work order. But for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and just approve the shop estimates. At that point, you would hit convert to project or to work order. So now you can see that all the information has transferred from your revenue budget, from your task cards, and from your cost budget 
it populated all the material and your labor items. The tasks are performed here, which currently has a status of in planning. So in order to have this ready for the mechanics to go ahead and work, you would need to go ahead and change the status here to active. So now I've changed this status to active. I'm going to hit save. And even at this point, you can add and you can change your cost budget. You can use your arrow here and you can go to item requirements. So from item requirements, you can release inventory requests and you can release purchase orders directly from their work order if you need by using these hyperlinks here. I'm going to go to the task button. So now that we're on our task, we can see that our task IDs are here and we have now assigned a mechanic to this work order. From here, we're going to transition into the shop floor app, which is our kiosk. Your employee would scan their badge or simply type in their employee number. So the first screen that you see here will show your name and they would scan the barcode on your router or you can type it in. And once I do that, you just simply hit enter or you can hit search task. Now as a mechanic, I will click on my task because this automatically logs my time, which means that I have started logging time at this time. Work order instructions would be listed here in the corrective action. So for this demonstration, I will create my corrective action. You can even request a part to add if you see additional damage as you're going. After you've created your corrective action, mark complete. And this talks to Acumatica in real time. So I'm going to go back to my work order. I'm going to refresh. And now as you can see, a mechanic did sign into the work order and they logged time and created a corrective action. Thank you. This will conclude our demonstration today for our quick overview on the Kiosk Shop Floor app along with creating a work order and using all the building blocks that make up ProMRO.